Okay, so thank you, Adam, for that nice introduction. And uh, hi, everyone from Latin America. Uh, good afternoon to all of you that are there in Lisbon. And well, I'm going to start with my talk. So I'm Jorge Vasquez, and I'm a Scala developer at Scalac. So let's start. As you know, everything basically is an API, right? Uh, most Scala-based applications are web APIs. They typically use the HTTP protocol and JSON format for communication. So we have APIs everywhere, basically. As a developer, it's very important for us uh, to test our APIs during the development process, right? Uh, testing your APIs from Scala, by the way, is very easy with Zeo HTTP. And I'm going to show you here an example of how you will to do that. So here I have this example of implementing a user's API with the Zeo HTTP endpoints API. So for that, I first define some domain models. For example, I need a user class. A user will have an ID, a name, and an optional email. Here you can see I'm also deriving a schema because I'm going to need it. Uh, I have this uh, post class that contains a user ID, a post ID, and the contents of the post. And now that I have my domain models, I can start defining endpoints. So these endpoints in Zio HTTP allow you to define, to describe your endpoints at a very high level uh, this way. So for example, here we have a get user endpoint. And here you can see this endpoint will accept get requests to the user's path. And in the path, you need to send a user ID, which will be an integer. Here you can see also I can add documentation, right? Uh, you can also specify headers that will be required. So here I require a location header. And this endpoint will return a user. So that's great. Now I can define another endpoint to get user's posts by user ID and post ID. So this one also accepts get requests. It expects a user ID in the path and a post ID as well. This one accepts a query parameter, a name query parameter, and the output will be a list of uh, posts. And finally here, I have a third endpoint to create a new user. So this endpoint accepts post requests to the user's path. It receives user a user as input and it returns a string as an output. So that's basically how you can define your endpoints in Zio HTTP, very easy, very intuitive. And once you have that on the server side, you can uh, define your server by using this endpoint. So how you do that is by creating routes. So a route in Zio HTTP is basically uh, the implementation of an endpoint. So here, for example, I have this get user route that implements the get user endpoint. You just need to provide a handler that returns a Zio effect. In this case, it's something very simple. For the example, something similar for get user posts and create user. And once you have your routes, you can combine them in a single route and you can use them to start your server. And that's basically how you can create servers with endpoints in Zio HTTP. Now that I have my server running, I can call the APIs from Scala using Zio HTTP. And it's very easy with endpoints. You just need an uh, an endpoint executor uh, from Zio, and you can use the executor to, to invoke your endpoints as a uh, normal functions, right? So here, for example, you can see I'm invoking the get user endpoint as a normal function, and I can execute that to a Zio effect. So I can combine this result with other uh, Zio effects like executing get user posts and create user. So that's very easy, right? Uh, using endpoints uh, simplifies our life. There is a problem we have, though. The problem we have and I, that I want to explore today is uh, calling your APIs from the command line. So as developers, we can also test our APIs from the command line, right? We can use uh, tools such as curl. And also, DevOps and the service in your company may need to call your APIs from scripts. So, well, maybe you are thinking, well, using curl is not that hard, right? But let's see. So here's an example using curl to get a user by ID. I execute this command and I get nothing. Hmm. 
that's weird. I don't know why. So to see what's happening, I can add this verbose flag. And now I get this awful error message and I have to read through it. And I discover I'm getting a 500 internal server error, but I still don't know why that's happening. So you go to the, the server documentation. If, if you have documentation, right? Uh, or you will need to analyze the server code maybe uh, after you have struggled, you realize, oh, it turns out we were missing a header, right? The location header I specified for this endpoint. And now I finally get the response I was expecting. Victory, finally, right? Something similar for the other endpoint. I can call get post by user ID and post ID, right? And here I get nothing. Again, I use the verbose flag to know what's happening. I get this awful error. Again, it's a 500 error. And after struggling, it turns out we're missing a query param in this case. And I need to add that query param manually to the URL. And now the command works. And to create a new user, it's even worse because you need to provide uh, the JSON body manually, right? Using this data row uh, parameter from curl, right? So you provide the JSON manually, got nothing again. The same process, right? I get to these awful error messages. I go to the documentation and it turns out we were missing a JSON field, the name field. And I need to add that field manually also. And after that, it finally worked. So the verdict, using tools like Coral is hard. We have zero discoverability, requires writing headers, query params, and constructing JSON manually. It's time consuming, error prone, and you get those awful complex error messages. So it's too hard, right? So the question now is, can we do better? And the answer is yes, of course we can do better. And here's where we introduce Zio HTTP CLI. So Zio HTTP CLI is a brand new feature from Zio HTTP that allows you to obtain a CLI for free from the definition of your endpoints. Just include Zio HTTP CLI as a dependence in your project to start using it. And let's see an example. So here I'm creating a CLI app, extending Zio CLI default that comes from the Zio CLI project. And well, now I have already the endpoints, right? We have defined before for get user, get user post and create user. And now we can obtain a CLI app from our endpoints for free. So how do you do that? You just call HTTP CLI app from endpoints and you provide a name for your application, a version, a summary, a footer that will appear in the documentation pages of the CLI app, the host of the server you want to connect to, the port and your endpoints. And voila, now that you have created your CLI app, you can start using it. For example, here, I'm calling this user management CLI I've created with the help option, and that will show me the help page for my command line interface. And here you can see some commands have been generated automatically from the definition of your endpoints. So I have a command to get users, I have a command to create users, and I have another command to get user posts. All of that has been generated automatically from your endpoints definitions. You can, for example, now we can compare to the previous example, right? Now to get a user by ID, I can call the get users command with a user ID. And now if I get errors, I get very specific errors, right? So in this case, it says expected to find a location option. So I don't have to guess anymore that I need a location header as in my previous example with Coral, right? Now I just provide a location option and I get the expected response. The other example, get post by user ID and post ID. I can use the get user post command. I provide the user ID, the post ID. I'm missing here the name option. And again, I don't need to guess to find in the documentation that I, I was missing that option. Now the CLI will tell me which parameters I'm missing. I provide that param and I get the expected response. To create a new user, very similar, you call the create users command. You provide some parameters, in this case, like uh, ID and email. And again, I get an error, a very specific error. It says here, I expected to find a name option. 
Again, I don't have to guess anymore. I need a name. And also, very important, notice now you don't have to manually build JSON anymore. Now, instead of providing a manual JSON, you can provide the JSON fields as options to your CLI. So in this case, ID, name, and email originally are part of the JSON body of the request, right? But the CLI allows you to provide these fields as options. And now I get the expected response. So in summary, calling your APIs with curl is terrible, right? It's, it's not that easy. On the other hand, ZOHTTP now gives you CLI apps for your APIs for free. You can get advantage of all the nice features from COCLI you already know and love, such as rich documentation pages, discoverability of functionality, inputs validation, auto completion, and spelling correction. If you want to learn more, you can visit the ZOHTTP GitHub repo or the COCLI GitHub repo. And if you are curious about COCLI, you can also watch my talk I presented last year at Functional Scala. And well, finally, special thanks to Cyberge for organizing this conference, John DeGos for his guidance and support, as always, for preparing uh, this uh, presentation. And thanks to all of you for attending. I hope this was useful to you. Uh, this was interesting to you. And here is my contact information. You can reach out to me in Twitter, LinkedIn, or by email for anything uh, you'd like. And that's it for today. Thank you very much.